system. So what is the system? It is a part of the configuration that you choose to isolate it. So you choose it, you choose the system. It's not gonna be given to you. You choose what part you would want to be in the system. So it's a part of configuration you choose to make a free body diagram to isolate it from the surrounding. So you can focus and study it, right? And what was the free body diagram? Free body diagram is just a conceptual drawing of the external reactions on the system. So what are the external uh, reactions on the system? Surface forces, body forces, right? We, we discussed this very briefly. Now you want to go to an actual problem. So if you go to problem example 4.1, This uh, configuration is given to you. So in fact, it's a connection of a weight to a spring and then hanging out from the pulley, which is fixed to this other end of the cable is connected to the wall. So here we have two cables. One here, there's no two separate cables, they're not connected. And one here. So let's normal them. This is cable one, this is cable two. Right? So right now, we want to talk about this first concept, system and FTD. These two, first two steps that we always do in problem solving procedures. So the choice of system is arbitrary. Actually, you are the, the person that chooses, you are the designer, right? So depending on what kind of problem you want to solve, if you want to find unknowns here, so you probably should, should, part some, should take some part here that are known to choose that new system, right? So how many possible choice of system do I have here? I'll go and count the number of parts. One, two, three. This little ring here could be a system too. Although the mass is very small, but it could be a system, that means you can isolated from the surrounding, right? One, two, three, four, this beam five, and also this arm, six. So the number of possibility of choosing the system is six. Now we, we want to demonstrate, choose some of these, and then go to a step two, draw free body diagram, right? So let's say this is, I choose this as system one, and this guy, system two, and 
the spring system three and cooling system four, this R system five and this guy, the spring system, system six. Right. Now I need to step down, which I specified the system. Look, there is a 22S of systems is not only one. Alternatively, I could choose these two as a system. You can do these two as a system. Like any combination of these. These two as a system. These three as a system. Every time you choose a system, your free body diagram is different. You should draw a new free body diagram. Right? So also don't forget, a combination of parts could be also a system. And you can have a different free body diagram. So now I go to drawing free body diagram. In fact, this is what we're going to talk today. So let's, let's choose system one, right? Let's before doing that, let's erase some of these unnecessary lines here. So let's go and choose uh, system one. And I want to draw a free body diagram for system one. Right here. So system one, I have a sphere like this, a mass M, right? Mass, I know the name of the mass, so it's six kilo grams. Right. Now, in order to draw a system, the procedure is what? You choose a point on this surface and start walking around it and see at what point you're cutting the surrounding. And then put the effect there, whatever force you have there, put the effect there, right? This is surface, so we have one surface forces, surface, let's write it here. FPD, we have surface force, body force. And when I say force, it means force of moment. Surface force moment, body force of moment. Right? I mean, we can, we can write reaction. Can't say reaction. Can be general than just single, single force. Now, to find the surface force, you start picking a point on that surface and start going around it, traveling on the dot line to see the surface reaction that the surrounding applies to the system. So starting with this point, you start walking. You know, you're not cutting anything from the surrounding. You're not cutting anything. Then you come here and you cut the surrounding. So this is not in your system one. This is surrounding. This is the external part, right? So what is the force that this guy is applying to system one? We can, not right, not right now, the force in the cable, what is it? Tension. Tension, do I know it? No, not right now, right? So let's say this is a T, let's say T1, because in cable one, right? You can call it whatever you like, x, y, z, right, a variable, right? So you're gonna have an unknown force going this way because it's tension, tension, right? So T1. If you know the value, you just put it here. Like if you know somebody tell you, we measure the force in this cable and it's two kilonewton, you just put two K. Don't introduce new variable because it's gonna mess up your solution procedure. It's gonna make it longer, right? So now continue walking. So we cut this guy, now continue walking. I'm not cutting anything, I'm not cutting anything. Go back to the point. So I'm done with surface forces or reactions. Now let's go to the body forces. 
So what's the body force? It's a gravity. You see, the gravity is not touching the surface, so it's not the surface force. It's the body force, right? Because we only have two categories. No matter how complicated your system is, you either have surface force or body force, right? So the body force is gravity. What's the gravity? Chapter one. Mg. So six times. 981. Since I know it, I just put the numerical value. Right? What else? I'm pretty much done. This is all. So this is FPD for system for system one. Right? So let's call it FPD one. FPD one. Now let's go to system two. Let's draw a FPD. What, what do I do to draw a FPD for system two? Again, draw this dotted line, which is an envelope around the system, and try to walk around it to see at what point you're cutting the surrounding. So I'm just putting it right here. So this is system two. So if, if you, let's just start from this point, move, move from this point, all right? So go around this part, and the first thing you cut is this cable. What's the force in this cable? Two. Do I know it? No. So, no. no. so introduce a variable. T2, for example. All right? T, T2. And look, the force in the cable is along the cable. So the angle is 60 degree. All right? This angle is still 60 60 degrees. Now continue working. The next thing you cut is the spring. Do I know the force in the spring? <coughs> no. Just put something here. An unknown. I call it FS, means force in a spring. Right? I don't know it. Right? So I introduce the value. You could call it anything you want. AX, whatever. This point is C, let's say CX, right? Sometimes you see a different kind of naming and labeling. It doesn't matter because this is used to, as a variable to solve the system of equation. When you solve it, the end result is just a numerical value, the force in this way. Now continue walking. What else you cut? Now you walk around this line. The next thing you cut T1. is the force in this cable, which is already T1. T1, what is going the other way? So this is going up, T1 is upside down. Look, you could introduce another variable, like T, like T1, whatever. But at some point you can't say these two are equal. So you have extra equation. So what you do to waste your time? You just right now, you don't introduce a new variable, just use whatever you have here. Just make the sign opposite, because this is a reaction, all right? Now you come back to the original point. So you're done with surface force. Now, body force. Now I tell you, this ring, let's say, its mass is almost zero. This is a ring, right? That all these things is connected to it. Let's say its mass is very small. So what's the body force? Zero. Zero, zero yeah. right? So that's it. This is my Three body diagram, four, so I write FPD, two, system two. All right. Now let's go to a spring. I want to draw a three body diagram for a spring. What should I do? First, it is like that. Now you have this line. The first step in order to draw free body line is to find surface portions, right? <laughs> so you start walking around this dot line, the red one. Is it not just the spring? It's because system two is the the ring, right? Yeah, system two. So is the, the so system three is the spring and the. System three is just a spring. This it's is going to be connected to this part of ring. If I draw it, so that's like the end of the spring. 
Yeah, okay. in the So this is a string. Okay. And then there is a connectivity like that, you see? And this is going to come and be connected to this part. You see that? This one is connected to this part. So, so this thing is just to be connected to the ring. And what about what about the end of that hook? Because there's a hook that the spring is attached to. Is that not part of system three? Is that its own system? The end of no. This is just part of the spring. Let's say this no, no, no. The other end that's attached to the door or whatever the wall. Because yeah, the other this, yeah, that is that part this, of system. No, no. This okay. is just this is just something like. <coughs> what is attached to the wall? Okay. But look, this could be a very complicated uh, attachment mechanism. It has a soft system. Maybe this connection only has by several screws and you know a lot of uh, soft system. But you are choosing from, from the overall perspective, right? You could you could go and to very detail of the connectivity of the screen to the wall. And whatever the screw you have here, you could choose that, choose that as your system. But right now, we're not interested. The thing that we talk about system, system, you choose what system you have, just to solve the problem. So there may be something here inside that is very complicated, lots of mechanisms, but it's inside my system. So they're going to be interior to the system. They're not external, right? So now, in order to draw free body diagram, the first step, draw this envelope and start walking to find surface force. Now pick this point and start walking. So the first thing I caught is this point. The, the force that this pin is applying to this, this uh, ring is applying to the spring. So what is this force? Do I know it? But I know I define something like Fs, right? So I put Fs here, right? The opposite direction, don't forget that. Change this direction, this is very important. Fs. Now continue walking on this dark line. You're not cutting anything from the neighbor. Then you cut this point. Well, let's say I don't know that that's a steel Fs. Let's say I'm just blind. I put Fs too another variable, because I don't know it, right? Another variable, because I simply don't know it. Although, right now, from the intuition, something tells me that these guys are the same. But let's say we don't know it. Let's assume that we don't know it. So FS2. Now continue walking. Then we go back to the first point. So these are <coughs> surface. surface. <coughs> now you go to body force. Now I tell you, the spring weight is a small, the mass is zero. So what's the body force? Zero. zero. So I'm done. This is FPD three. Right? Now I could draw all these things, but I leave it to the next class. So I need FPD for all these things. That's exactly the same thing. I want to finish one cycle of problem solving. Right? So now, I want to, before we actually uh, go to the uh, equations of equilibrium, I want to give you the five step procedure. One, system, actually, we already have it here. Two, FPD, three, equilibrium, four, solve, five, verify. So this five step, this is the general algorithm that you're going to be using this in your entire education life. It doesn't matter if you're undergraduate, master, PhD, it doesn't matter. Mechanical, serial, chemical, this five step is always valid. And you, every problem you solve, you kind of either do the five step or you're just working on some part of it. This just, I would call it, this is a skeleton of engineering. So what we're, we have done this so far, we have worked on this side, right? Now let's go talk about the equations. In this course, maybe if you have a different field, the equation changes. <coughs> Chemical engineering, the equation changes. <coughs> but the procedure is the same. In this field, we use Newton law. So Newton law 
says x is equal to ma. Force, this is resultant force on a mat on a system is equal to mass of the system times the acceleration of system. Now let's say, let's consider this mass here. What's the acceleration of this mass? Zero, right? Because this acceleration is v acceleration, v velocity, dt, time derivative of velocity. And we, when we look at this guy, when we actually attach this weight and start stretching, right? It, it may go to some vibration, but it's gonna stay at long. So, and then when you look at the system, there is no velocity, nothing is moving, right? So if the velocity is zero, what happens? Derivative of velocity, zero is what? Zero. zero. Time, any mass, it doesn't matter what mass the system has. If the velocity is zero, this is what? Zero. zero. So the resultant force is zero. Look, so far before chapter four, we've been working on resultant force to find, you remember resultant. So we know how to do it. <coughs> so if you find your resultant and make it equal to zero, you get an equation that you can solve from unknowns in your system. So you can analyze your mechanical system. So now things get interesting. Now you get this equation, let me write it here, resultant force is equal to zero. So this is always valid for any system. It doesn't matter what system you choose. This is always valid. The net resultant force from the external, these are external resultant force to the system. For example, when I draw this guy, when I say resultant here is zero, I'm talking about resultant of the three force from the neighbors, from the surrounding, not the internal forces. They don't matter. They cancel out with each other. The one that comes from surface or body force. So this is one equation. Another equation is M is equal to I alpha. This is also Newton law. Right? It is Newton's second law. This is the same. But you get this equation from taking the angular momentum of the first equation. You, you will study this in dynamics, the course dynamics. So this says that the moment you apply on, a, on an object like this, moment is like torque, causes angular acceleration, as you can see. You see, it's a sudden rotating. So you can get kind of velocity change, angular velocity change, like a rolling movement, right? So let me ask you, which one of these guys are you rolling? Like angular velocity. None of them are angular velocity. So this term, angular acceleration, which is d omega dt, since none of them is rolling, there, there is no velocity like this, right? This is zero. The derivative of zero, zero, zero times anything zero. So net moment or resultant moment around any point should be zero. This is other equation. Now, look, this is true equation. Resultant force is zero, resultant moment is zero. But these are vector equations, you see the vector here? So they unfold into three equations, each one. Each one gives you three equations in 3D. And how many equations in 2D? Three. This one gives you two equations in 2D. This one gives you one equation in 2D, because in 2D you only have Z moment in z, k, right, positive k or negative k, just one of them, right? Now we, we, we use this, this information, so let me, let me expand this, in, in, so this is going to give you summation of force in x0, summation of force in y0, summation of force in z0, and this is going to give you summation of moment on axis x0, summation of moment on axis y0, three system, and if it was 3D, how many equations I get at the end, the total? Three times 18. Three times six, 18 equations. Because these are pair system. If it was in 3D, but look guys, this is a 2D problem. So how many equations do I get? 
persistent. This guy, this guy, you don't have Z, right? So one, two, three, right? These are the equations you use in two D. This, 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 right? So persistent, you have three. So I have three systems. How many equations do I have? Nine. Nine. If it's two D, which is in this case. Now, if if I look at it from three dimensional, I have some three-dimensional loading on it, let's say this is something in the space and you have three-dimensional loading. Then you have three systems here. How many equations do you get? Six per system in 3D. So three times six, 18 equations. That's gonna be a long, long thing, right? So that's the reason I made a separate step for equation and I made a separate step to solve. Because first you have to get all the equations and then, when you have all the equations, then you can see which one to start with, which one is the easiest one. Right? So you can solve it better. So you have a separate step for this. So let's do that. Let's go to, a, to system one and write the equations. So system one, you want to write equations. So what is the first equation? Summation of force in x zero. And then the second equation, summation of force in y zero, and then the third equation, summation of moment upon z axis is zero. You see, I'm doing this equation, this equation, and this equation because it's two D. If it was three D, I had to go and write all the equations, six equations, right? So what do I get for summation of force in x direction is zero for system one? What do I get for that? Look at free body diagram. Now, this is the time that you use free body diagram. Look at free body diagram system one. What do you get? Zero. So the left hand side, summation of force in X is zero. And the right hand side is already a zero. So this equation is valid. Zero is equal to zero. But it doesn't help us. It doesn't give us the information to solve for our loan. So that's the reason I call it the null equation. This is the null equation because it's, it's ju just doesn't help at all. Now later on, when you practice, you don't even write it if it's not. You save your time. You get very better. You can solve the problem in like 15 seconds. All right? Now let's go to summation of force in y direction. What should I write here? Right, T1 minus six times nine eighty one. Six times nine eighty one. What else? Yeah, nothing else. So is equal to zero. Now let's go to the moment. And let's say I keep this point as my center, the center of this mass. So what do I get for the summation of moment around this point? Zero. You see all the points that are going to that point. So again, you get another null equation. Zero is equal to zero. Well, it's valid, but it's not going to help us, right? So the only useful thing is this guy. This is an actual equation that can help us. Now let's go to system two. Which one is system two? That one. This one, right? So summation of force in x zero, summation of force in y zero, summation of moment around any point is zero. So what should I write for the first equation? Fs minus T2 cosine 60 is equal to zero. What do I get for the second one? T2 sine 60 minus T1 is equal to zero. What do, we, do I get for the third equation? Zero is, a null. zero is equal to zero. No. Zero is equal to zero. Thank you. 
right? But look, guys, I got two actual equations. These are independent, and they are not null. They gave me information. All right? Now let's go to system three. System three. Summation of force in x zero. Summation of force in y zero. Summation of moment. So what do I get for the first equation? Look at three boys diagram of system. Three. So what's your word? Ten plus minus seven plus. So here, F S two minus F S is equal to zero. Zero. What about this guy? No, it's just no. This guy? Zero. Zero. So the only useful thing is this guy. So let me let me highlight the useful equation that they uh, help us, they come handy and help us to find possible unknowns if I have if I'm if I'm trying to solve for one particular thing. These are the equations that are not known. They actually are helpful. Right? Now <coughs> Or we go to an actual problem. Let's say the actual problem, we're going to design it. I want to know how much this spring deforms. This is an actual problem. This is a practical. Now we get into practical problem. Let's say before I start connecting this configuration and apply this way, right? Let's say the spring is right here on compress, up, on a stretch. This is the spring. And this is on a stretch, initially, right? Before I apply the weight. And then I use this cable and put the system and I apply this weight and it's hanging out. If, when I apply the load, the spring is going to stretch until it comes to an equilibrium. It's gonna vibrate a little bit and then it's gonna settle down, right? This is equilibrium. Now I want to know how much it, this deformation is delta from here to this end. You see that? I want to know how much that delta is. Now that's a, that's a question. Well, I should have said this before, even before starting this. But I didn't say it to distract you. We went over choosing the system, drawing free body diagram, writing all the equations, right? And now I say how much that delta is. Now we have motivation to solve. So if I find, if I solve all these things and somehow get the force in the spring, right, after it comes to equilibrium, then I can find the deformation. Because what? Because we're going to hoops, the force in the spring is equal to K times deformation, delta. This is a hoops law. Force in the spring is K constant to the spring times displacement. Right? We had this before, right? This is independent of Newton law and the procedure. It's only valid for the spring, right? So if I somehow get this guy, right? I already have a spring constant. What's the spring constant? 1K, right? Then I get my deformation. So in order to get the deformation, I need to find Fs. But guys, look, right now you immediately see. Where is the Fs? Here. Right? or here, right? Fs is here or here. So in order to find Fs, what should I find? T2. 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 Yeah. In order to find T2, what, what do, I, do I need to know? T1. And in order to T1, what do I need to know? This equation. See? So it's like a domino game. When you have all the equation, you will start f finding a point and ticket, once you solve it, then you can propagate and solve everything. All the equations. That's the way we solve problems in this uh, field. I don't want to say in this course because you're going to have exactly the same thing in the next course dynamics, fluid mechanics, all the courses. It is everything the same. You have all the system of equations, then you start from the point and you solve, go to the rest of system, right? So we. Uh, Right now, I know what to do. I want to find Fs, because if I have Fs, I divide by spring constant, get the deformation. 
And how do I find the phase? By just starting from this point, because this is the easiest one. Right? So what do I get for T1 if I start this equation? 58.87. 50? 50. Yeah. 50. Eight point eight six. Nine. Alright? Right? So this is T one. Then what do I get for T two? So this is T one. Now here T two becomes T one over sine sixteen. Which is equal to 58.9 divided by sine 16. Do that. 67.9. So 68. Right? Alright, so I have T2. What else? Now I go to here. So this is what step one, step two, and now I can go. The step two, look guys, you can't start solving this by just choosing system two, because you get two equations, one, two unknowns, one equation. Look at this. You have two unknown, one equation. And if you consider these two, you have one, two, three unknown, two equations. So just choosing this as a system, this ring is not enough. That's the reason you have to be good at choosing the system. Unfortunately, your book is not good at doing uh, this step. It doesn't even mention this step. It gives you the system. Well, this is a system draw the three boy diagram. Well, it, that's a really less a hard spot. Choosing the right system. Because that great system might be problem. So now I have T2 and step three. The force in the spring is equal to cosine 60 times. T2, 68. Put it in the calculator, please. 34. 34. Right? Now, my, my deformation, we go to the root law. Delta is FS over? K. K. So root, root law. Delta is FS over K. Fs is equal to what's the value of f? Thirty-four. Thirty-four divided by one k, which is ten to three. You see the screen constant here, one k. If I don't give you a screen constant, what do you do? Let's say you work in a co company and there are parts, and there is a constant there, and I don't give it to you. What do you do? You go to the manuals, data sheets, right? You can, you can always find it, trust me. If you buy a component, you can always find the, all the data you need. So you somehow you get that 1K. So 34 divided by 1K is 34 times 10 to minus three, just bring it to top. Meter, this is meter, so 34 to 10 to minus 3 meter, which is 34 millimeter. That means this big. You see? This one. Now, we did it, we solved it, right? What is the last step? Verify. Verify. Look, sometimes the problem is very complicated. You can't, you don't have any intuition to verify it. But look here. How much deformation do I get? 34. This much. 34 millimeter is this much. It makes sense. Well, my spring is kind of like this big, and this is six kilograms by 12 pounds. So it's a significantly large deformation, right? So it's like this much. So that, now that makes sense. Well, it may be good. But let's say if you get 3,400 meters. <laughs> three kilometers. That means from here to red downtown. No, not the red line, that's that noise. <laughs> from here to probably the river, right? Then you say, well, I don't think any spring can extend that much. 
something is wrong, so what do you do? You reiterate. Let's use a different color. You just come back and do your second iteration. Good engineers always fail at the first step. So if you fail at the first step and you verify, you're doing right. It's a part of the game. Iteration. So you come back here and check. Let me check my system. Maybe I forgot the force. You say no, the free boy diagram, everything is right. And then you come here, equations is right. And then you say no, equations are right. Instead of like this negative, I have a positive. For example, if you do it in the wrong way. And then you say, aha, uh -huh. then you fix it, then you solve it, you get a right value. Maybe you just don't have 10 to 3. It's usually unit conversion. My students, the problem, the big problem is unit conversion. Gigapascal, millimeter. You always have a 10 to 9, 10 to negative 3. What do you forget? B forget, I shouldn't say A, B forget. All right? So when you do verification, the advantage is this kind of like solution manual. It gives you some idea of how the solution should be. So you come back and you say, but guys, this part is going to be the same in no matter what course we are studying. Vector, static, mechanical material, structural analysis, structural dynamics. Dynamics, doesn't matter. Machine design, machine, machine dynamics. We had a course called machine dynamics. The parts in the machine move, and then you have to uh, analyze the gearbox, the, the ratio, like the movement, and stuff like that. It's the same as this. Maybe the equation may change. Maybe in addition to Newton's law, you have some laws of diffusion for chemical engineers. You have some laws of magnetic, Maxwell equation for electrical engineers. But the procedure is exactly the same. This framework is exactly the same. So, so far, I want to close it at this point. We have closed the loop. So this is what we're going to be doing to the rest of this class. Nothing's going to be new. Frame is a part of this. Truss is an example of this. Friction becomes an example of this guy. You just add something to the free body diagram for friction effect. So after this, you're not going to see something fundamentally new. It's just a different kind of practi practical problems. Okay. All right.